Howdy to my footwear friends and fiends. It's your sinister spectre shoe savant here, Ed Frankenbud. Today I've got some of my favourite running related nightmares for you. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel people, thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like if you are enjoying it. Dankeschön. I've returned from the overtly long toilet queue to deliver to you my running related nightmares for 2023. These are some of the worst things that have been happening in running over the last year or so. First up, I've got the case of the cursed shoes. Does anybody remember these? The Adios Pro 2, the Berlin 2021 edition. I'd never seen a shoe that looked so awesome. The colorway is just absolute Yet, whenever I adorn myself with these shoes, something calamitous happens. It's like a carbon-plated curse, you could say. Whenever I put them on, the shoes seem to seek out some sort of disastrous event. Almost cataclysmic, you could say. They're just cursed craps, I suppose. So, I've now slid on a muddy patch during a very fast tempo run in these and gone flying off into a grass verge. I fractured my shoulder in two places whilst wearing these shoes too, when I got appended by a dog lead, running at like 10k pace or something. It wasn't good. I went flying. I went a long way down that path and I think my elbow and my shoulder are just about fixed now, but mentally the scars are still there. And of course I stood in a pothole round about mile 18 of the Brighton Marathon earlier on this year, so I had to quit out of that one with a DNF and obviously wear these shoes all the way back to the uh, sort of end section where I could pick up my bag. It was a very lonely, lonely furrow that I ploughed that day. You will not be surprised to hear that I have now retired these dangerous daps. I've confined them to the shoe scrap heap or the graveyard, I suppose. It's a real shame, to be honest, as they felt absolutely fantastic on foot. I remember running at one point like 10k pace around the trading estate over the other side of town or something, and I was having a whale of a time. I could run like an extra in a zombie film, attempting to evade an evil apparition. The feel of the Light Strike Pro here and that Continental rubber were just magic, but they kept on lulling me into a false sense of security and tricking me time and time again. Not anymore though. It's strange how pure coincidence can make you think that a shoe's really bad. And of course it's not all of these other variables that you can't control happening at the same time. Another terrifying tale for you. Ever woken up on race day, got yourself fueled up and ready with some of that apple and blueberry porridge, cup of coffee, everything's in the right place. Only to look down your watch and remember that you failed to recharge it. I gotta be honest, cats, I love my running technology. I wear two watches, one's on miles, one's on kilometers. These are super quick to attach to the nearest GPS signal, mega accurate, and there's tons of different functions sort of built in under the hood too. But sadly, with more features and functions, that means that the battery gets sapped that little bit faster. Certainly when a watch starts to become a couple of years old as well, it soon drains down pretty fast. The main issue I've got here is with those proprietary cables that they give you with all these different watches. The Garmin ones have got like a four pin one. I think the Coros watches have got a three pin cable. I guess it's to ensure that the watches are completely water resistant, but those connectors they've got really don't work that well. They don't really attach that well. They come loose very easily and the cables that they always give you are really short. I guess, you know, you can't have it all. Water resistance and a decent cable length. Those cables are a little bit like guitar plectrums. You put them down and then in seconds they just magically disappear into this void, into the abyss never to return. You can never find one when you need one either. Lost to the void, I guess, with all those important things like your car keys, your park run barcode, and of course, safety pins. Tell me now where safety pins are in your house. Bet you can't. Half the time having to leave the device sort of hanging in midair, connected to the cable. It's like a flying apparition. Too many times my device has moved or it's become detached, then I've ended up charging like the watch to like nothing at all. Just give us a meter or two in length, please, people like Garmin, Koros, you know what to do. Just make it easy for us to charge these technological terrors. 
Moving on now through past the graveyard to the abandoned house. I've noticed that there's two types of running shoes that have been released over the last year. There's those that need a little bit of break in and then last for absolutely ages, or the ones that feel absolute magic out the box, but then quickly fade around about 100 miles. It's awful when your favorite running shoe starts to go past its best, a bit like a banana, you know, if it's just a little bit too ripe. We've got one every year, haven't we? The absolute banger that it's got to be the one you use every day. And suddenly it dawns on you that your beloved shoe has just lost that magic. Something's changed. The relationship is past the honeymoon phase. You start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt the shoes. You get little aches. You start, you know, assigning them to the fact that it's actually the shoe that's caused it. Or is it simply in your head? To be or not to be. Or as I like to think of it, do or do not. I think our bodies try to hold us back a little bit sometimes, don't they? When it starts to hurt, you get the angel and the devil sat there. Stop right now. Just slow up a little bit. Doesn't matter anyway, really, does it? You knew you weren't good enough. No, don't stop. Never let down. Don't let up. Think of the things that make you smile and keep on going. You can do it. See? do or do not but there is a try i suppose and that's just fine do your best don't let the negative vibes get to you gotta be honest i do receive some messages sometimes i do wonder whether people think it's appropriate to say that to somebody in the street clearly they wouldn't do because then it's not anonymous is it anyway back on track i do feel there's certain options out there in terms of shoes that do you feel good up to a certain point then it's a very quick decline i do find that zoom x can deteriorate pretty suddenly in some of the models that was especially true in some of the very early versions of the vaporfly not so much now with the more recent blends some eva based shoes do seem to hit a certain point then quickly firm up and offer a less forgiving ride perhaps now they represent the ancient mummies of the running world my last running nightmare for you for today. It's the constantly increasing price of shoes. A viewer recently commented to me that the Vaporfly 3 seems to have a very small price increase on it over the last few weeks. I think it might be regional, but we've certainly seen a slightly more expensive Vaporfly 3 here. Certainly that Kipchoge model was like a 10 or more. Very small price rise to 235 from 225. Yes, you've got inflation, blah, blah, blah. Sadly though, the actual wages and things don't seem to have inflated that much. It's simply sending everything in the wrong direction and something needs to be done really. Same materials and the same design. It's really the same product, just with a slight refresh. Don't even get me started on the £400 Adidas Pro Evo 1. It's madness and I'm sure that a slightly cheaper standard runner version will appear. Heaven or hell knows the intended price of the Alpha Fly 3. I mean that in itself with the nightmare situation right now of the Alpha Fly 2. £280 here in the UK. Nike seem to have lumbered themselves with the zombie of the Alpha Fly 2. Almost all sizes of that available in pretty much every colorway right now. At least here in the UK at the time of making this video in October 2023, you can lay your hands on any of them in any size. I reckon they're delaying the release of the Alpha Fly 3 to try and clear out some of that stock. I think those Alpha Fly 2s just lingering around like a bad smell in the warehouse. Okay, that's all my running related nightmares for 2023. Let me know your your nightmare situations down in the comments. Do you think that we'll hit a ceiling at some point in terms of running shoe prices? You can get a good trainer now for like 50 pounds if you shop around. Do you need a dedicated running watch? Well, as long as you know your routes very well, I mean, you could just use a stopwatch, couldn't you, really? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on all of this down in the comments. <laughs> Musical interlude today for the Halloween edition of my Ed Bud video. It's gotta be the Black Rebel Motorcycle Club's first album. It's just called Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Can't believe this was released 22 years ago. Still sounds absolutely fantastic and ideal for a wet and windy, spooky evening. It's not all atmospheric sort of weirdness on here. Spread Your Love is a stomper. Banging drums and awesome distorted guitars here. And there's the chanting of Red Eyes and Tears on track two. Guitar that sort of flow and mold into each other a bit like lava i can remember listening to this one on a cd walkman back when it first came out walking up the road in a storm it was fantastic i think you need to experience that guys to fully get the 
best out of this album. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you have a happy Halloween. Remember to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. Also, drop us a super thanks as well if you want to support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. Or you can become a member as well. Info's down below in the description. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Ha 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 ha.